I am dead. It's not shiny or bright. No one waits for me at the end of this long, dark tunnel. There is no end. There is no light. But wait, what is that? Can you see it? It's a spark of hope. It's getting closer. I am paralyzed, totally paralyzed. But I am not powerless. Kate was planning to be a fitness trainer when in 1995, at age 33, the mother of two suffered a massive stroke. I was trapped in my body, totally aware of everything going on around me. I just couldn't communicate. And it wasn't until my husband asked me a simple question. I realized I could blink my eyes. And with all my strength, I did that. I remember blinking out, am I going to die? Every day was a struggle, but it was a struggle born of one simple dream. Kate wanted to go home. She, in 1997, Kate traveled to our nation's capital to help the American Heart Association launch a national campaign for women's health. Kate Adamson was 33 years old when she suffered a stroke, leaving her paralyzed for 70 days. Unable to communicate with the outside world, she has since made a miraculous recovery. And the condition I had is called locked-in syndrome, where basically I was trapped inside my body and unable to communicate with the outside world. Wow. You know, again, you look at you, you hear you, and it really is uh, miraculous uh, to see the recovery. And uh, I have to say, it's somewhat inspiring. Me. You like came out of it. Did you think you were going to die? I thought I was going to die when I was in the critical stage for those 70 days, yes. You had thought process. I actually, yes, mm -hmm. I did. But I still wanted to fight. And I want to thank you for your applause. I want to acknowledge you too, but I can't because my left arm is paralyzed. And I can't applaud. Or can I? Well, I could say I can't clap because I have a disability. Or I could say I have an ability and I have a right hand that works and with that one right hand, I can eat, drink and drive and write a book and I can applaud you. So what does the sound of one hand clapping sound like? <laughs> Do you know what that sounds like? Well, let's try it. Hold your hand up. Bring your fingers to your palm. <laughs> I love it. Is there another way? Well, we could hit our hand. There you go. Cindy had it. You see, there's more than one way to solve a problem. And there is yet another way. And I'm going to ask my husband, Stephen, to come up here for a second. And help. <clears throat> Thank you. Now that's what I call giving someone a hand. <laughs> but isn't it amazing what we can accomplish when we work together? So do I have one hand that doesn't, doesn't work or do I have one hand that does work? And it depends upon my perception and my focus. And as you can see, there are lots of ways to resolve problems as there are people to solve them. Even seemingly impossible problems can be solved if we shift our focus. And it really is a thrill and an honor for me to be here today. And as you can see from my video, it's a thrill for me to be pretty much anywhere. <laughs> because in 1995, I had a crash course on how to do the impossible. And one night, I was fit and healthy, a 33-year-old mother of two. And the next morning, I was hanging on to life, for dear life. I was totally locked in my body unable to speak, unable to move, unable to do anything. And I had less than one in a chance, one in a million chances to survive. And for weeks, I was not only trapped in my physical body, but I was also trapped in my thoughts, constantly thinking about what I couldn't do. The list was overwhelming. I couldn't do anything. Can anyone relate to that? Have you ever felt that way? So what do we do when we feel paralyzed? Do we think about what we can't do or what we can do? 
Or do we focus on what we don't want or what we do want? I hope that the story of my journey has given courage to your heart, strengthened your soul, and if it does, then the journey was worthwhile. Thank you. My thoughts as far as Kate Adamson is just wow. What an amazing story. She is just a person that is so strong and took such strength and dignity to be able to go through what she did, really come out and help herself, but more of anything, be able to help so many other people along the way. Kate Admonson's story was heart-wrenching, but yet also very uplifting. I loved Kate's speech and only wish we had more today. I read her book and I laughed and I cried through the entire thing. Such a powerful story of strength and what, what you can do. And that was the greatest message of just focus on the positive and not on your limitations. I love you, Kate. You were fabulous.